Hey, what is up YouTube? It's Terrence and I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be doing some more compositing, but it's going to be more advanced because this time we're going to be using Fusion for the compositing work. In the last video, I only used Fusion for the rotoscoping, which is massively, massively underselling what you can do inside of Fusion. So we're going to be using EXRs, we're going to be talking a bit about workspaces. It's going to be fun. Hit like, subscribe, and let's get right into it. This is what we're going to be making today. I got this 3D model of a Lamborghini working spider. I think, I think that's how it's pronounced. And I got a backplate and an HDRI from HDRI Haven. I'm going to have the links for the HDRI and the, the backplate down below in case you want to do this yourself. Boys, let's get to it. To it. So we're going to start off in Blender. The first thing that you want to do is to go over to your camera, add your backplate as a background image. This is just for reference. I recommend setting your opacity to 1, that way you can see the image a whole lot better. Now we need to get the focal length right. You could use some lines in the scene to guess the perspective if you don't know what the focal length was when this was being shot. In this case I, I don't know because this is a picture I found online, I'm not sure what camera lens was used. But it seems pretty wide. What I'm doing here is matching the plane to the leading lines that run off into the distance. If you know how cameras work, then you know zooming in just won't do it. You have to change the focal length to get it a bit wider. I'm guessing something around 16 to 18 millimeters should work fine for this. After some tinkering, I settled on 18 millimeters. You can see the difference here when I switch between 18 and 50 millimeters. You can see the lines, they're now running more parallel to the lines that are, that are there in the actual picture, and that's what we're after. Now we can import our model and start matching it to the scene a bit better. To create a shadow catcher so you can see the car's shadow, you will need to go to the render engine, select cycles, and you go back to the object properties here and you select shadow catcher under visibility. To actually see it working in action, you will need to go over to the render settings again and turn on film, and under film that is, turn on transparent. Right now the scene has no light, so we'll use an HDRI to quickly light this image. I don't think I'll be using any additional lights because it's a really simple image right now and the lighting is not that complicated. As you can see with the HDRI image now loaded in, it looks a lot better. We're getting some lights in the scene. But one issue you might run into is your HDRI might not match your shot when it comes to the correct rotation. To see this, we will need to go back to the render settings and disable transparent under film, right? So once that is turned off, we can now see what the HDRI looks like. To get it rotated, you will need to use a shader editor and the two nodes to get it turned. So let's do that real quick. So here it is. We're gonna go we're gonna go up here and select shader editor for the window. And we're gonna switch this from object to world. Now we can see the HDRI. We're going to add a mapping node and connect the vector to the vector of the HDRI. Then we're going to add a texture coordinate and connect the generated to the vector of the mapping node. For the next step, really all you got to do is go down to the rotation Z axis and add some rotation and get your scene matching what's actually the picture. So we know the C is over on the right side of the car and the trees are over on the left. So we add some rotation and get it looking like that and uh, our reflection and everything should match up. The car is not that reflective but if it was then we definitely see the difference here. Don't forget to enable transparent so we can see the shadow catcher working the way that it should. Now I'm just messing with the camera and the, the car model so I can get the scene to match a bit better or have it look the way that I want it just a bit more. Once I find a spot that I like I always set a keyframe for rotation and location on the camera. That way if I should like move the timeline or move the camera by mistake I can always go back to that perfect spot. I also increase the size of the plane that way when, it, when the shadows are cast, depending on, on the view of the camera, the, the shadows might fall off the plane or it might seem to fall off so just ensure it's wide enough depending on how you're going to render your scene. For the next step, we will need to create two different render layers. That way we can render the shadow on one layer and the Lambo on the other one. 
because if we have them both on the same layer we, we lose control of the shadow that's falling on the floor right here i created a new collection and added the the plane to that collection the lambo is already in a collection so that's all good you can go here up at the top and add a, a new render layer we'll be using these to render the images separately on separate layers so we'll just call one shadow catcher and the other one lambo on the Lambo shadow layer, we're going to right click the collection, go to view layer and set it to set indirect only. Then we're going to go over to the shadow catcher view layer and set the Lambo to set indirect only. So vice versa. This way the shadows won't render on the Lambo layer and the Lambo won't render on the shadow layer, but it'll be affecting each other. That way the Lambo can still cast a shadow but not show up in the renders. Now we're going to move on to setting up our render passes. Pro tip, you can go up here and cycle through the different passes to see which ones you'll be needing. Um, if it shows up completely black, then that means there's no information for that pass. You can always just skip it. So like for me in this instance, I know that transmission direct doesn't have any information, but transmission um, indirect and transmission color does. So I'll just select the passes that I need and then we can move on to the rendering. Here we are in the compositor and what I'm going to be doing here is simply turn on a viewer node and a composite node. I like moving them over behind the render layers that way they don't really get in my way. And I can put all the other nodes in front of it. I'm going to be making two render layers because remember we have one for the Lambo and we have the other one for the shadow. So just make another render layer and go down and select the shadow catcher. I'm just going to drag it, put it above or below or whatever suits you and then we can move on one thing that I did not remember here was to turn on the denoising data and also be sure that you're turning on the, ren the render passes for the correct layer you can see here for my shadow layer I only have the, the regular beauty pass or the combined pass and here for the Lambo I have all these other passes turned on so just remember that you check the denoising de data and always hit render after adding new passes because if you don't then you won't be able to use those passes so here you can see me doing another render but then I can start preparing my files for fusion so with my render ready let's start setting things up and you can see exactly how I do this alright so I'm checking out the different passes at the moment you can see there is a lot of noise on the different passes this is the diffuse direct pass there's a lot of noise here. If I add in the denoise node, I connect the denoising albedo and the normal from the passes and then connect the diffuse direct in the image. If I should look at that, that output now from the denoise node, you can see the noise goes away. Here, I'm duplicating the denoise node and adding the same albedo and normal to it. So we can check out the diffuse indirect. If we look here, we can see even more noise, but if we connect that in the image and look at the output, then our noise is gone. So this is going to be super helpful when you're rendering at lower samples to get a good quality image. Now let's start setting up our files for exporting. We are going to be adding in a file output node. Just so we can output the EXR files with all the different passes that we need with the denoising data already in, because if we just do the normal render, then we're not going to have that flexibility. But here with the file output, that is all possible. I'm going to click add input for all the different passes that I have here. That's the alpha, ambient occlusion, or three diffuse passes, three glossy passes, and uh, the three transmission passes. I'm going to be adding another one for the shadow layer. We're going to be putting all that into one input for this EXR file output. That is the beauty of EXR files. Here I'm renaming all the file output inputs so the different render passes that we have will correspond with it. Once that is finished we can start connecting everything where it should go. So the denoising data we're going to input that into the diffuse indirect and direct because those passes are the ones that got denoised with these nodes. The color passes usually have no noise since they're really flat. Just one color so I can just plug those into the inputs for the file output without going through a denoising. But for the other ones, the direct and the indirect, those will have noise. So I'm just gonna make a denoise node for each of them, connect the normal and albedo just like before, and then I connect them to the corresponding input on the file output node. 
here I should have ran the ambient occlusion through a denoising node as well but I forgot to do that but I will be running our image through the denoise node for the, the beauty or combined pass here I choose a file output I recommend always adding it to a folder that doesn't have anything else in it because if you're rendering an animation then you'll be getting all the frames as different EXR files and you don't want that in a folder where it's got a, a ton of other files there to, to get it all mixed up this is me forgetting that I didn't add the shadow to the file output so I'm adding another input I'm calling it shadow and then I'm going to be connecting the image from the shadow catchers render layer to this node right here and also here I should have ran it through a denoise node since the shadow itself will have some noise in it but I forgot this this as well but it all works out in the end learn from my mistakes guys don't be like me and don't be dumb the blender portion of this tutorial is pretty much finished so we're just gonna hit render and since we have that file output node attached the blender is just gonna save a file out every time you hit render part 2 will be up within 24 hours of this going live and this is where we're gonna be diving into fusion this is where the bulk of the compositing will be taking place so we'll be adding in all the different passes as nodes we'll be adding color corrector nodes brightness and contrast I'll be going through how you can manipulate each and every piece of it to get a realistic look and this can work for stills or video I really hope these tutorials are helpful to you guys and you can always drop questions in the comments you can make suggestions and I'll be more than happy to assist you in any way that I can don't forget to like and subscribe I'll be dropping tutorials on blender DaVinci Resolve fusion in the future I'll also be doing some tutorials on live action stuff I do short films music videos ads and all that so it's gonna be fun over the next few months. Well, stay tuned for part two of this tutorial. Peace.